You know what you should do? You should follow me on Twitter at Bromo018. Link in the description. Do it now. Hello everyone, welcome along to another video. Bromo18 here and today we are back with another FIFA 20 custom tactics video. This is the series where we not only recreate tactics in FIFA 20 but also I show you how to adapt them slightly so that they will actually work in FIFA 20 and you'll find a working system and you'll be able to play in your favourite real life systems. We've done a couple so far and now we move on to the 2007 4 3 2 one team of AC Milan uh, featuring Carlo Ancelotti. Better known as the Christmas tree, this team uh, went on to win the Champions League in 2007. They'd already previously won it as well in 2003, but we were different systems, some different personnel. And, um, you know, I do try and avoid being biased in, in well, on this channel, but I've got to admit, uh, this Milan team of 2007 is um, without a doubt my favourite team of all time. Um, I'm not an AC Milan fan, but this team was, you know, just my favourite. It's something that reminds me of my childhood, to be honest. You know, the personnel in this team, the way it was set up, just absolutely brilliant. The midfielders, Seydorf, Pirlo, Gattuso, um, Inzaghi up front, Nesta and Maldini at the back. It was just a wonderful, wonderful team. And today, I'm going to show you how to recreate it in FIFA 20. By the way, go and check out all the previous uh, FIFA 20 custom tactics videos if you haven't already. And also check out my AC Milan career mode series currently ongoing. But without further ado, we are going to begin. Now, um, this is the system we've gone with. It is a 4-3-2-1. Uh, but bear in mind that I have changed the positions of some players' sort of base positions. So uh, we'll come on to that when we do. So you'll pick the 4 3 2 one and then adjust the base positions. As you can see, we've got wing-backs, we've got uh, CMs, a CDM, RAM, a uh, left tackle fielder, etc. And I'll explain why. So obviously you've got your goalkeeper, that's fine. Then you come on to the back four. You'll have your flat back four, but what we do is, is we actually shift the right back and left back up to wing-back. So you'll now... He'll be playing right wing back and uh, Hernandez will be playing left wing back. And the reason being is that in this system, of course, you've not got a lot of width. You know, it's all about providing options in the centre, being um, or crowding out the centre off the ball as well. And so as a result, your entire width of the team is going to be created by these two fullbacks. And so on FIFA, what you'll find is if they play at wing back rather than at normal fullback, not only will they get wider, but they'll get further at the pitch. And that's what you need them to be like. You need them to be all-rounded, complete players who can uh, you know, fill a role and do a job at both ends of the pitch. And they're going to create much more width. So you want to swap them into wing-backs. And then we come into the midfield. You've got this uh, midfield free. What you want to do is... Is you want to set the, set the two side midfielders to right and left centre midfielder. These are going to be your enforcers. This is your Ambrosini and Gattuso role. And then you want your PLO man to be actually change to a CDM. And the reason being is that you don't want him to venture forward. You want the attacks and the spells of possession to go through him. And if he's playing as a holding midfielder, he's going to stay back around about you know the in front, just in front of the centre circle. And a player, you'll be able to recycle possession through him and he can find those passes, you know, and, and avenues all around him. So you actually want to change to a CDM. If you put him at CM, you know, he's more likely to get forward, um, further forward, even if in the instructions you set it as to, uh, to stay back. So set him as a CDM and, uh, you know, that'll work better. And then, of course, you've got the two centre midfielders. And then we move on to the attacking midfielders. This is the Seidorf slash uh, Kaka sort of roles. What we do here... It's because you can only have one camp. It's actually fine to move these into left attacking midfield and we'll sort of deal with how they uh, sort of come centrally and stuff in the instructions. And let's talk about that now. Let's go into the instructions for each player. Uh, I'm also going to try and explain to you sort of the type of player you want in each position as well to the best of my abilities just so you can sort of recreate it because of course none of these players um, are uh, no longer on the game. So first of all, we come up to goalkeeper. And for one, this would have been Dida uh, in real life. You want him to come for crosses, and that's the way Dida was. Uh, he was very aggressive, liked to play on the front foot, liked to seize the initiative, always come for crosses. And you could also do sweeper-keeper for the fact that, you know, it's a very much possession-based system, and, you know, that reinforces the whole being aggressive, playing on the front foot type of style. So sweeper-keeper and comes for crosses. Your two centre-backs are fine. Leave them on normal interceptions. We always talk about how all your players should generally be left on normal interceptions in systems because otherwise it would probably drain their stamina too much. 
There is one player in the system that we are going to change to aggressive interceptions and we'll come on to that shortly. But for the rest of them, keep them on normal interceptions. So your back two is fine. And then you move on to the wing backs. Very self-explanatory for them. You want join the attack and overlap, and that's how they'll, um, you know, create that width and also provide an option going forward as well. For these wing back tights, it's again, like I say, very self explanatory um, for the type of player you want. You want someone preferably with high, high work rate, lots of stamina, lots of pace, um, and he's able to, uh, you know, competently fill out both jobs. So that's very fine. Now we move on to the holding midfielder. This is your Perlo type role. And here, you're looking for a player, one, probably with medium to low attacking work rate. So they're not going to get further forward too much. Um, and then, of course, you're looking for a player with lots of passing ability, short and long passing ability, uh, vision, etc. Things along those lines. Um, you know, in terms of stamina... Can, they can be a little bit lower and that's sort of an issue in FIFA 20 with the, the lack of stamina from a lot of players. Of course, Pirlo very much was a player who didn't expend that sort of energy when he was brought into that um, sort of holding midfielder, sort of deep line playmaker role that we, we now know he has. Moving on to the instructions for him, um, you want him to man mark and the reason being is that I've found on this FIFA um, a lot of issues when they're not marking. They don't stick to... Um, sort of uh, you know their zonal areas and as a result you'll find a lot of players getting free runs so we changed that to man marking for the sake of trying to compensate on FIFA in terms of attacking support you want to stay back while attacking um, which is pretty again uh, obvious because uh, you know Polo doesn't venture forward and then in terms of defensive position you actually want him to cover the center you've got this base free along with your center backs um, and then the right and center midfielder should cover the wings if necessary if not that will fall to the left and right attacking midfielders but for for the deep line playmaker keep him centrally now we move on to the left center midfielder so his roles will be slightly different to the right centre midfielder. Ambrosini, very much a box-to-box -box man, and that's what he was brought in to do because of his energy. So in terms of attacking support, you wanted to get forward, provide that support. However, in terms of support on crosses, you actually wanted to stay on the edge of the box. And this is about recycling possession. Your front three, uh, the two attacking midfielders and the striker, are going to be the ones to get into the box. Otherwise, um, it's all about keeping that sort of rigid system on the outside, being um, well, having that protection blanket as well. So he'll stay on the edge of the box. Um, and then in terms of defensive position, you can have him covering wing. That's absolutely fine. Um, if you notice that your attacking midfielders are doing that for him and it's leaving you a little bit vulnerable um, on the inside, then you can change that to cover centre. I'd say cover wing because what's going to happen is, say if they've got it on the right, you're, all your midfield is going to shift over and then, um, in this case, better Ser and Kessier, but you know, you'd know you change these, these players, um, would shift over and cover the centre. So that should be okay. Um, so that would explain his... Uh, roles, but it's slightly different for the right centre midfielder, and this is your Gattuso um, esque role player who I was very, very fond of. So, in terms of attacking support, you actually want it on balanced. The reason being is that he's not um, not quite your box to box man, he's more there to break up attacks, but at the same time, it's not as if he remains back and doesn't, you know, just sort of take a passive role on attacking. He does offer um, options here and there, so keep that on balanced. And then, of course, as a result, you want it on stay on the edge of the box of the cross. Keep that sort of you know, mentality to recycle possession. Um, inter interceptions, we did say earlier, there will be one who does change to aggressive interceptions. This is that one. Um, you know, Because obviously, you're looking at that Gattuso role. You want to find someone who um, you know, has that enforcer type. And aggressive interceptions means that they're going to be looking to uh, play on their front foot more when defending. They're going to be looking to be more, um, well, have more impact you know, to try and win the ball. So aggressive interceptions is to try and replicate that um, in-game. And then again, cover wing is absolutely fine. In this sort of role, um, you know, obviously you're looking for a player with a lot of aggression, a lot of defensive awareness, strong, lots of strength, high defensive work rate. That's the sort of player you're looking for. For, for the left centre midfielder, you're looking for, well, Kessier, really. Kessier is the absolute ideal player to play on this left centre mid role. Um, high, high work rate, lots of stamina, 95 stamina, lots of strength, and very all-rounded. Look, there's, there's greens everywhere, there's long shots, um, etc. Obviously, short passing, 
his defensive abilities, all very, very um, competent. So he's actually the, uh, the perfect role for this. We'll actually play as Billy and Benacer. Benacer is probably a decent um, option for um, for the Enforcer. Not quite ideal. Just looking if they've got anyone else. Maybe uh, maybe Krunic? No, not quite. Um, you know, AC Milan don't really have that player here. But, you know, again, looking for that Gattuso-esque man. So someone very aggressive, defensive-minded, high defensive work rate. Um, and, you know, lots of... Um, Lots of things like strength and, and aggression, etc. Um, so that's pretty, pretty much that sealed. We move on to the attacking midfielders now. So again, there's going to be slightly different instructions. One of these is your Seidorf type and the other is your Kaka. So the left mid or the left attacking midfielder is going to be your Seidorf. Um, so the instructions will differ slightly. Here, you want to come back on defence and get into the box of the cross. He's going to be, again, like a boxer box man, but he's going to get into those more advanced areas as an attacking midfielder. So a bit more further on from the uh, Kessier slash Ambrosini type. Um, and then you also want free roam in terms of positioning freedom. Now, um, I'll explain that actually. I'll explain that in a minute while you want that. Let's do the other one first. So you've got Seidorf, he's you know, a boxer box attacking midfielder. Then we move on to the Kaka role, and this is a little bit different. Instead of come back on defence, you're going to have basic. And what it was is that they were generally settled to a two banks of four when out of possession. Um, Kaka would sometimes trap back, but in other times he'd give them, he'd stay out the field further and give them that out ball along with the striker, which would have been Inzaghi. Um, so you actually want him on basic defence support. So he will come back in certain situations, but generally, um, you know, he might offer that out ball. In terms of support on crosses, get into the box of the cross. The way they played very much this front three were the ones storming into the box, and that will be re, uh, replicated in the tactics as well. And then positioning freedom, you want free roam. The reason being is that these are left and right attacking midfielders. And so, you know, you might find that they're sort of drifting out onto the wing and to try and avoid that you want free roam because then they're generally going to come more centrally and also they're going to swap with each other you know both of these two are going to rotate um, and that was very much a big part of the plan for, uh, for AC Milan when on the ball um, and it just gives people the well the opposition sort of the thought of you know do I trap my man do I stay in my uh, my zonal area so very much free roam on both of them will get them into changing and it will get that sort of free flowing style um, you know feeling good and then finally we move on to the strike which would have been uh, Filippo Enzaghi what a player he was so in terms of support runs stay central very very um, important to this system that he was that focal point. Um, so you want him to stay central, don't come out onto the wings. That's for the fullbacks and the attacking midfielders. And in terms of attacking runs, you actually want him as target man. Now, people get the wrong impression when, um, you know, I would say target man. They think you're um, sort of looking at a tall striker with strength that you're going to knock loads of high balls up to. Not the case. The reason why you put target man is, is that, um, as it says here in the um, sort of instructions, you back into an opponent, you're playing with your back to goal asking for the ball to feet, you hold it up, you play on the turn, and that's what a target man does, and that is very much what Filippo and Zaghi was all about, and then you're still going to get them, rather than if it was a false nine, um, in more of those advanced positions, they can still do that as a false nine, but they'll be dropping off too much, whereas a target man, he'll stay as that most advanced player, and in terms of defensive support, you want him on stay forward again to give you that out ball, so that is the player instruction settled, we now move on to the tactics and first of all we look at the defense so you want pressure on heavy touch and the reason being is that otherwise they're going to drop back and be very um very rigid in their sort of defensive system which was a big part still that solidity but you know they can play in the front foot if needed and when you know there's a mistake occurring on the opposition they're there ready to pound so that was a big part of their game then we look at the defense and again it's all about keeping that solidity so why do you keep that solidity you make sure your team are narrow so we move the defensive width to two uh, so it's going to be very narrow they've got to play out wide it's a narrow system they crowd out the middle um, and then the wing backs or the uh, the side midfielders will go out to the uh, you know the man who's about to cross the ball in. So you want it to be a very narrow, very solid formation. And then in terms of depth, we actually want to move this up to about seven. And the reason being is that you know the system was very much not like that very obvious front foot attacking system. So you wouldn't have the depth all the way up to the top. But either 
at the same time, you're not going to drop them all the way back. Now, the reason you put for seven, it's the highest way, um, or it's the highest level before it changes to sort of a high block. So you keep that mid block of players, um, and it very much sort of complements the style of pressure on heavy touch. But otherwise, you fall back into uh, into your ranks. Moving on to uh, offensively now, um, offensive style possession, very self-explanatory. The the system is tailored to a possession system keeping players in the central areas lots of short passing options and that's reflected in the width as well you go down to two width because you're going to get a lot of players in the short vicinity offering um, you know well providing options for the short passes and then your width is going to be created by those wing backs and that's why we change them to wing backs because they're going to create the entire width of the pitch and still give that out ball uh, to get it out to the sides and, and look into the space. And this system is very much about, you know, trying to manipulate space um, and utilize it to the best of your ability. And you can do that by, you know, creating the illusion of it, you know, with the all of these central midfielders in such a short vicinity. So width on the, um, uh, in possession would be two. And then moving on to players in the box, you actually want to move this to six. And the reason being is that that means you're generally going to have three players in the box. That works absolutely perfectly because you've got the striker and the two attacking midfielders storming into the box. Other than that, you know, the fullbacks are going to be surrounding uh, along with the centre midfielders who will be on the edge of the box looking to recycle possession, pick up loose balls. So, yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory. And then onto corners and free kicks, what we always do is we move it up to four. And the reason being is that it will give you enough players in the box to you know, really produce a threat and still give you two or three players back. Um, so that's more than enough to be you know, stable to try and prevent the character attack. So that would round that off. And on that note, that is it, guys. Well, it's taken us, what, just shy of or just under 17 to 18 minutes um, so that's not bad, not bad at all. Really enjoyed, um, you know, doing this formation again. Like I say, just one of my, well, it, my favourite team of all time. Absolutely love the sort of players in the system. And, um, you know, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Let me know what you guys think. If you played with the formation, let me know how it went. Um, like I say, it is adapted to, to work in FIFA, so um, it should be okay. Um, bear in mind, you do have to try and play in the system that is sort of, you know, tailored to it. You know, just try and up the intensity all of a sudden um but yeah apart from that that's it that's it guys thanks a lot for watching if you made it through to the end do be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell for notifications also don't forget to check out any of my previous tactics videos and my ac milan career mode on fifa 20 as well on that note we are going to round it off there thanks so much for watching and i'll see you soon Come on.